Good day, fellow investors. Welcome to the stock market news with a long-term fundamental twist. There is so much news about what happened yesterday, who tweeted what, and very little news about the long-term fundamentals of the stock market, and that's what you're going to get today. Today we're going to discuss Irrational Exuberance, a book that Professor Nobel Prize winner, Yale professor Robert Schiller wrote in 1999 saying that the market is extremely overvalued and that you should be very careful. Imagine the balls he had to come out with something like this in 1999. And look at the chart at page six of his book. This is the S&P 500 index when he came out the book and he was called crazy and a lot of other things for saying that it is overvalued. I don't need to tell you what happened next. However, in the book, he offers indications of what do you need for long-term investing, behavioral, there is a lot of sentiment in the market, always trends and everything, but what do we need to know to invest over the long-term and do that safely? These are the factors he uses to establish whether it was a 2000, 1999 stock market bubble. I remind you, before the bubble burst, so earnings, valuations, dividends, the economy, and long-term expected returns. And we're going to compare the 1999 situation with the current 2018-2019 situation. So let's start comparing and let's start to see whether what he was very prescient about in 1999 can be applied again today. Inflation adjusted S&P 500 just went up from the 1980s, 1982, and we see that, okay, the S&P 500 is just a little bit higher than where it was in 2000. However, it is higher, and I consider even this bubble as just a continuation of the 35-year bubble that started in 1983. To quote Schiller from the book, we need a better understanding of the forces that shape the long-run outlook for the market and it is such an understanding that this book is intended to provide. So such an understanding is what this video is intended to provide. And if you have such a long-term perspective, if you know what are the factors that are important for your portfolio, for your long-term investment returns, then investing is really easy, no matter what happens in the exuberant market. Tweets, uh, Tesla, investigations, all of that is just noise. Focus on the fundamentals and you do well in time. Another quote from the book from 1999, these results, he means record high stock prices, have created a sense among the investment public that such high valuations and even higher ones will be maintained in the foreseeable future. And then again, yet if the history of high market valuations is of any guide, the public may be very disappointed with the performance of the stock market in coming years. Again, 1999, 2018, 2019, people think that these valuations are here to stay forever. That's the predominant sentiment. Invest in index funds, markets are efficient. Similar story if you read the book to what it was the case in 1929 and 1999. Let's dig a little bit into the details. Schiller discusses how the Dow Jones went from 3,600 points in 1994 to 11,000 in 1999. So it tripled, but the American econ economy didn't triple at all. If we look at it from a 1987 perspective, the S&P 500 went from 287 points to 2,884 points. So it became a 10 bagger in 30 years. However, the American economy did not increase 10 times, it increased four times. If I would put that into the S&P 500, then the S&P 500 would be at 1,136 points. Imagine the pain if the stock market would converge back to the growth of the economy. Similarly, earnings rose from 38 to 144. So what's that? Increase 3.2 times. So imagine that earnings grew 3.2 times in the last 30 years. The economy grew four times. So earnings are there in line, a little bit lower than the economy growth in earnings. 
but stocks are up 10 times. Bubble bells? I don't know. Let's continue to look at this. One reason for exuberant stock prices is high growth in earnings and people like to extrapolate from the past. In 1991, earnings were very low because of the recession at 27 points, I think, for the S&P 500. But they grew extremely fast to 70 in 2000. So people were looking at this, extrapolating this in the future and were exuberant about long-term prices, stock prices. So if I take the earnings from the last 10 years, we can see that from 2008 also earnings were very low and the growth was staggering till today when we are at 120 with the tax fiscal stimulus it will probably go a little bit higher. So again we have a similar situation like the 1990s really fast earnings growth faster than the economy but it starts from a lower base. If I just add two years to the earnings chart we can see how earnings practically didn't go anywhere especially if accounted for inflation then earnings would be negative. So that's another sign of irrational exuberance as people like to look at the growth you can sell that growth. If I tell you earnings grew I don't know from 30 to 120 four times in the next years are still growing at 10-15% per year then I can get you excited about investing in stocks especially index funds which are no risk great diversification and then I can sell you that. If I tell you earnings have been negative when adjusted for inflation over the last 10 years then you would say why would I invest in something that doesn't grow? That's the human mind, that's the behavioral part of our